Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Review. So today I decided for my like list video I would do a like top getting close perfumes or like intimate perfumes or close encounter perfumes. Just like the getting sexy perfumes because I feel like everyone has their own interpretations of that and I feel like all these picks are really good for kind of getting close but they're also really good at making a statement. Um, they aren't in any particular order. I do have like my top 10 with an honorable mention. Um, but they're not in any particular order. I'm kind of just going to grab them and talk about them and kind of go through them. Um, these range from celebrity to designer, just kind of all over the place and all over the place on price range. I kind of want to give you guys not all celebrity and not all, like, designer. I just wanted to give you a good mix of both. So, um, my honorable mention is Katy Perry's Mad Potion. So, this one smells identical to Bath & Body Works' like, Vanilla Bean Noel. Or even if you remember, like, from the 90s, they had those, like, vanilla body sprays. This smells exactly like that. It's very pure vanilla, um, mixed with, like, that perfumey vanilla. And it's a really good layering scent. So if you want to add a vanilla to any scent, this is a really, really good one. Plus, it's super, super cheap. I know you can get this bottle for super, super, super cheap. And the vanilla in this last forever. So the first fragrance in, like, our top ten is going to be KKW Fragrance Body Number 3. So this one's, like, the unisex one. This one's the better on, or borrowed from Bay, but better on her. It does have a little bit of a cologne vibe, um, but it also does smell kind of like a perfume at the same time. I really like this one. It's really different from anything else I have in my collection. It's very, like, like I said, it does have a masculine vibe to it, but it is also kind of like the smell of a perfume and a clone on a hoodie. Um, it's just very soft, it's very delicate, it does kind of smell like a female's fragrance, also kind of smells like a male's fragrance, so I definitely get the Borrowed from Bay, but better on her. This definitely does have almost like, um, she sprayed her cologne and then his cologne on her, just to kind of like, smell them both. It definitely has like a duality to it, and I really, really like that about this one. Um, holding up this bottle this long, I'm probably gonna get demonetized, we'll see what happens. Next up, we have Daisy Love by Marc Jacobs. So, I'm not a huge fan of the original Daisy. It's nice. It's okay. But when they came out with Daisy Love, there's something about this one that is amazing. So, it's like cloudberry. And, like, it has, like, really simple notes from what I remember. But it smells kind of like it has vanilla in it. And it really doesn't. Um, I know that. But, like, it's very warm. It's very soft. Very slightly floral. But it's also very... Something just very intimate about that, and I really, really like that about this one. Um, I know that they did just, un like, they're going to be launching, like, an oh-so-sweet version of this one, and I can't wait to try that one, because I love, love this one, and I really did like the, um, version of that one, right? The yellow one? Sunshine? When they did the Sunshine one of this, I smelled it, I just haven't picked it up yet. Um, I like that one, too, so I really like this one. It's very vanilla-y. Um, with, like, some really warm florals on it. Even though vanilla's not a note in this, I definitely get kind of, like, a warm, ambery vanilla vibe from it. It's very, very different from, again, anything else in my collection. Um, but it's also very safe at the same time, and that's what I kind of like about this one. Next is Rihanna's Kiss. This is from her Riri namesake series. This one is Plum Musk. It's so, so pretty. It's got these really pretty florals in the heart of it that just make this fragrance unlike anything. It's so ungodly amazing. I love, love, love this one. Um, the plum is really sophisticated in this. Sometimes plum can be put in a fragrance and make it too, like, syrupy or jammy. There's something about this one with the florals in it that just make it amazing. It's so good. Very intimate, very kind of sexy, very kind of like, ooh, what's that? Kiss was a perfect name for this, because it's almost like the scent you would love to smell on someone's neck. It's very, very, very intimate and, like, seductive. Um, but it also does, it's not younger smelling. It does have a little bit of a mature vibe to it, but not being, like, overly mature at the same time. That's what I really like about this one. And the blue is so pretty, too. Of course, we can't talk about intimate fragrances without talking about Britney Spears Fantasy Intimate Edition. So this one smells like the original Fantasy, I'm not gonna lie. It is definitely like an intimate edition of the original Fantasy. I thought it was really dumb that they didn't call this Fantasy int or Intimate Fantasy. Like, that's what I call it all the time when I'm like, just referring to it. But it is Fantasy Intimate Edition. This one has the same DNA as the original Fantasy. It is definitely a true flanger to the original Fantasy. This one, though, they replaced the cupcake with brown sugar. And there's just something about this one that it's 
the notes are so different from the original, but it does smell a lot like the original. And also, like, it's more grown up and more intimate. Like, if you were to think of what you would imagine an intimate version of fantasy smelling like, this is it. It removes that teenage like, sicky sweet and creates something warm and sweet and almost syrupy. But, like, a good syrupy. Almost like you can tell that it was made from brown sugar. Like, kind of caramely, but not quite caramely. Like, it's really, really good, I promise. Next up is Tender Romance by Ralph Lauren, and this one is like a mature, grown-up version of Viva La Juicy. So it does kind of have that Viva La Juicy vibe, but it also has some white florals and some, like, prettiness at that heart that aren't, you know, present in the original Viva La Juicy. This is definitely, if you were a Viva La Juicy girl in, you know, 19, 20, 21, this is definitely... Good as you get into your late 20s, 30s. This is a perfect fragrance for that. And there's just something about that that is different from the original, like, Viva La Juicy. This is its own interpretation of it. I feel like everyone nowadays has their own interpretation of that scent. And this one is just very grown up and very well done. It doesn't smell grandma-y. It doesn't smell, like, overly mature, like, potpourri or anything. It has a really nice, just, like, light, in, like, grown-up intimate scent to it. Of course, talking about Viva La Juicy, I'm going to bring up a Viva La Juicy. Like, this is Viva La Juicy Noir. I know some people are going to think, oh, you're talking intimate, you're talking sexy, you should bring up Gold Couture. I do like Gold Couture, but when you're getting intimate and getting sexy, I definitely prefer Viva La Juicy Noir. Just because it is kind of that has that berries in it, but also has a really strong note of vanilla. And the vanilla is not in the, like, Viva La Juicy Gold Couture. And vanilla is obviously like a natural aphrodisiac. But, like, the berries in this are just so pretty and so sweet. And this one definitely does heavy on the berries. And, like, it's, like, that was the main, like, version of this. Um, but it's also really, like, there's just something about this one that it screams noir. It's definitely dark. It's definitely, like, sexy. But it's still Viva La Juicy. Next up is my favorite girl of all time, Taylor Swift. And this is Taylor Swift, Taylor by Taylor Swift, Made of Starlight. And... This one is very sparkling. It's got really, really bright notes in it. It's very crisp. It's very clean. It's very, like, made of starlight. It's very shiny and sparkly and iridescent. Like, I like how the top of this glitters because that's very how much this fragrance is. It's very pink. It's very sparkly. But it's also kind of something that... It's not like all these other ones where they're seductive and vanilla -y. This one's kind of, like, crisp, and it's you smell clean. You smell pretty. You smell sexy and it's a different type of sexy without having to be a heavy dose of vanilla next up is shakira's dance this fragrance is so pretty it's got florals in it it's slightly kind of spicy but not really spicy it's very exotic it's very reminiscent of uh crush by rihanna but this is different this is more aquatic it's more sexy it's more summery it's and this one is an eau de toilette but it lasts so long um, and it keeps this, like, really light airiness throughout the whole fragrance that, uh, Crush doesn't have. And this is just something very different, and not something that you see done a lot. Next up is Truth or Dare Naked by Madonna. This one is heavy on the benzoin. It is, like, a sexy, dirty, ambery caramel. Definitely what I think, like, Madonna would smell like. It's very sexy, very kind of different and something that you don't smell. Um, normally done, it's n vanilla isn't normally done like this. And the way that they mix benzoin in with this, it makes the vanilla very rich and dirty and, like, almost like a raw, dirty vanilla. And that's what I really like about this one. I know a lot of people like the original Truth of Dare because it's very heavy on the tuberose and, to me, kind of smells like sweet tarts. Um, but this definitely has, like, a rich, ambery, dirty, caramel vibe to it. And it's something that's really underrated, in my opinion. And last one. Is this the last one? I think we're on the last one. Treasure in Love by... Oh my god, I can't get the label right. Treasure in Love by Lancome. This is so, so pretty. It is rose done in a way that I can actually handle rose. Like, it has a good rose in here. Um, it's not like a grandma rose or it doesn't smell super gross. This is just has something in it. It might be the mixing of pear and, or not pear, peach and nectarine. They're, like, you don't see those really put together very often. And it's just so good. It's so, like, girly and pretty and, like, falling in love. Like, it's so, I'm, I'm just in love with this one. I wear this a lot, even though, like, 
it doesn't look like it. I do wear it a lot. You don't really need a whole lot of this either. One or two sprays and it does last a very, very long time. I sprayed it on a hoodie and smelled it like hours, hours later. So there you guys go. There is my picks for my top intimate perfumes. I hope you guys enjoyed this list and I hope you, you know, pick up some of these or try some of these out for yourself if you maybe never heard of them. As always guys, thanks so so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, A that's perfume and Instagram among the stars perfume. Links in the description below. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.